Am I able to call upon Carrie's higher self, please? Yes, this is them. Thank you so much. Uh, are we able to do a body scan and see what's happening for her body? Uh, yes, we'll scan her body. And it looks like everything's going well. Um, her energy is still as it was the last transmission. Um, we're giving her a little bit of a ringing in her left ear to remind her of the, uh, you know, the transmission when she hears the ringing, um, just to kind of fine tune it a little bit more for her for this, uh, for this transmission. Thank you so much. Um, I know that she needed and wanted some more energy upgrades uh, so she could release um, any of the residue from the sessions. Uh, is that possible for you to do today? Um, yes, we can give her the energy upgrades. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we're curious to know about this current timeline that we are in. Would it be accurate to say that this is the last timeline? Um, in a sense, yes. Uh, in a sense that the timelines, uh, you guys were talking about it earlier. Um, the timelines are all it's true they are all happening right now as in this current moment um, with the uh, laws of the uh, this earth and so, um, we need to apply it to some questions because we think that tie in some ones with people and so we're going to use some of the verbiage that um, you use previously to help the imagery the timeline we're all having right now and what they did mean behind when um they uh the one of the previous sessions about what timeline gets put on record which is what uh, that that means is of the consciousness the collective consciousness of what would be if we were to go back at any point in time or from the 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 uh the akashic records that if we were to try to access this timeline as what was experienced in the conscious level, that this deep timeline that you guys are experiencing is that timeline. Does, we can access alternative, re, alternative realities and we can access what the other consciousness of uh, the ones that weren't imprinted as the true history of the world. And so with this timeline that is going on right now, because of the change of the December shift this timeline is now one that is uh needing the most support and it does need the most of our resources and this is going to be the one that is deemed as the the we don't want to say hardest because you know no good and bad and we feel like you guys take that as a, a doomsday thing but it's not it's not that it's the hardest it was this, this is the one that's going to go down when they go to access what happened to the ascension of gaia they're going to access this timeline. And this is the timeline that needed the most support. So if you will, the victory points you guys are going to get on, you know, when it, you not that you guys are going to need it, but the victory points that you guys are going to get is because that is a consciousness that you guys were immersing yourselves in. And that um, is recording in the database. Um, is there, can we answer it any more specific? No, thank you. I, um, it was a good, uh, good answer and so i can understand that well thank you so much um out of curiosity i am curious to know about the past lifetime of gaia um and her consciousness what are you able to tell us um we are going to give you a uh um, Carrie, you can relax. Uh, it's our information, not yours. Um, we are going to give you, when you ascend and you evolve, there is, there are different collectives have different uh, uh, types of evolution that they're uh, trying to obtain. And at some point for some of the collectives, what becomes a driving force is that you've 
you've grown to a certain level, you know, when they talk about dimensions and at a certain point with different dimensions, you have the choice to become your own planet. So that means that Gaia was once a part of the evolution process. And this is just another by being your own planet with other beings um, uh, cohabiting um, on it, that that's just another step in the evolution. And we are not going to give you Gaia's pathway. Uh, uh, we feel that going to the new earth, that some of that is going to be explained. And uh, you, we do not want to inhibit that process and uh, steal the thunder, if you will, of what that is going to be unveiled. But we can tell you that the consciousness of Gaia had once been, a, this is a part of the evolutionary process. And if you, you could be on that pathway, you know, um, eventually, if you choose once to ascend up the ladder of dimensions and the lessons that are needed to be learned, there is an opportunity once you get to a certain level, if there is a need for a planet that, uh, or a consciousness within a planet that you, you potentially could have an opportunity to become a planet yourself. And so we hope that gives enough information to explain without unveiling uh, something that we believe Gaia is, uh, that's on her heart to tell you and not for us to relay on her behalf. Thank you. I do respect that and appreciate the information you've provided for us today. I really appreciate that. Um, out of curiosity, uh, I'm curious to know about the symbolism and the significance of the number 144,000. Uh, we have asked in sessions before, but I'm curious to hear what you have to say to us. <sighs> We're just showing Carrie a couple things. Uh, um. Uh, for what we're showing Carrie is that it is a uh, the collectives, uh, including the collectives that have uh, joined in a hybrid in the hybrid race, um, that it is a representation of the 144,000 light systems that have joined uh, forces here. So that could also be, as you guys have heard, you know, you could be resonate with a different, uh, so you could be Octarian and Pleiadian or Draconian and Octarian. So that includes those hybrids as well. Um, and the collectives that have come to these earth to for the experiment of uh, what it was meant to be. And so it's just a representation of the beings that had access to the highway within uh, Gaia's realm. Thank you so much. Um, we were also curious to know what the message was last time uh, Carrie had a session with us, where there was one being with uh, who wanted to say something at that time. Are we able to hear from him today and find out his message? We're going to ask him to come in. The way he is transmitting this information is different than any being that has transmitted. Uh, he is, it's almost like he's staring at me with his eyes, but it's his, uh, it's from his third eye that he's just, there's a like holographic lights, like this pink and blue light that he's sending. I can watch him send this information. I can't, I, have to, I need to relax, I think, because um, he's trying to get me to. This is one of the higher, higher up commanders. This is, this, this, this is the being that uh, left for a time, the one that I, my grandmother had spoke of that gave him, that his body, 
and he's been on a bigger he's he was a part of this mission always but he he went to uh like the command ship uh where the higher level conversations happened Thank you. And so what information would he like to share with us? It is time. It is, it, it's time. It is, it's time. He just, he's telling me more, but all I can, I'm stuck on it. It is time. It is time for us to hold the light. If we, He's showing me Gaia's earthquakes. He's showing me the comparison between the, he's showing, he's making me feel it in my body. Like it's my body is releasing the, releasing the emotions so that Gaia can release her emotions. We need to release them now because we're helping her release. And <sighs> she can't release the pressure if we don't release the pressure. And when we do, we're going to feel lifted. We're going to feel, we're going to feel that lift off breath. <sighs> we are a spark of Gaia. We are a spark of her. And that is the connectivity with her. And that is why the grounding with her is so important because we think we're just sparks of the collectives, but we are sparks of her. And the doing the work is so important in assisting her. It's not about healing ourselves, it's about the releasing. It's not about healing, it's not about fixing, it's about releasing, releasing the density so we can free her and, and ourselves. And it's really intense and I can feel it as if my body's thundering, that it's not a thunder, it's a, it's a release of pressure and it's elect, is really, really, it's really, really tingly. That's what he was putting. That's what he was. That's what he was doing with his mind. Is he was, he was activating my. I guess my portals. I don't know my chakras. I don't know. He activated something within me. Oh my gosh. Oh. To show me what she needs from us. Oh. Wow. Thank you. We we're almost holding her back. She doesn't want she doesn't want to leave and have that for herself. If we it's almost like a symbiosis. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like we we all need to experience it in the, this timeline, on this timeline, because this is the one that will go down to show for future collectives when they go to experiment on future planets as to what that ascension will uh, look like. So people stop living in the past so much. Uh, people stop being misguided and what they need to do. So it's all good. It's so that later on that the, these mistakes aren't repeated, that this is going down in the consciousness. <sighs> Thank you. I understand that we can't take our 3D emotions with us and we have to 
heal and balance all of those emotions so we don't try and bring them to the fifth dimension is that correct yes 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 uh release release and and that'll give more expansion for the light but once you release it's it's time it's time to go I'm not saying that as if it's tomorrow. What I'm saying is it's time to release so it can be time to go that uh, we still can play a part in that. And so whatever that release is, uh, it showed to Carrie that she felt like she was releasing a lot of stuff, but it also showed to her that there is truly that physical either crying or shaking or you feel it in your body when you release and that to, that'll help tune in to if you are if you are bracing against the emotions and the release of those emotions um and it, it's yeah the flow is good too we get that but the flow plays into the resisting against the emotions that you don't want to tap into and it really does create that like hard cry or it creates that like physical body <sighs> she's having a hard time is all she's feeling is like she just had an earthquake. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'm trusting uh, that Carrie's spiritual team are protecting her body and giving her an experience, but it will not impact her in any way. Um, yeah, she actually feels better from it. Nice. It's, it's almost like you just you kind of shake that shit off kind of what she would say like she's feeling better from it just the physical uh, physical movement of that energy the trembling and the shaking just really helps some of those large deep rooted large points that vibration almost like helped like if you had a, like they do those experiments with sound and vibration when they put the sand on the table, it's almost like there are some sand pieces that just didn't get moved by the normal modality. So the true actual vibration of her releasing helps those dislodge so they can now be in harmony and flow with the rest of the, and in a sense, alchemized and release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when she was experiencing it, it did, ripple out and affect me where I did have a cry and release as well and now I can feel that my, my I can like breathe in properly now there is like a shift in my core that I am profoundly noticing as well so this is phenomenal thank you you're welcome um uh oh. um we we know that the message we gave you yesterday did play into helping prepare uh, the conversation for what, uh, but Joe, we do believe that Carrie had some more sticky points that this vibration and her feeling in on this level would help her release more than the effects of uh, you as the vessel, the vehicle of transmission, uh, relaying it, you've done, uh, you know, you don't have the same little st sticking points, you just have your different ones, but Carrie really needed this from a deeper place. And that's why we really uh, knew that she could, she, we knew that it would be most beneficial to release it with her and allow you to feel it as well. And hopefully everyone that's able to take time to listen to this can feel what they're you know what feel it and help inspire them what that release that they're looking for for when they are um going within absolutely love this thank you so much i'm sure that there'll be many people who will be able to assist with the releasing of this themselves and to help so i love this thank you so much it makes complete sense to me and i'm so glad that carrie could experience that too it feels very appropriate so um, I do have a question about um, timelines, um, just so I can understand one thing. Um, if there has been other timelines where people have shifted, um, sh and so Gaia has not shifted with them in those timelines, or um, I'm just trying to understand um, that the new earth has already been created and Gaia's consciousness is still here, um, but have, has she shifted with other timelines too? 
Um, so, like we said, there are sparks of Gaia within you guys that, in a sense, she has her spark. But Gaia is not going to leave the star seed, uh, the ones who have not awakened that are star seed sparks with that are of her. Any star seed collective that has a spark of Gaia, she will not leave until they have all awakened. Not, and she's not speaking of all humanity, which she's speaking of the sparks that her resonation of her frequency that are inside the star collectives that were sent here in the first, second, third wave, and the continual volunteers that continue happen. Until the last one has been ascended of those collectives that hold a spark with him and her, she will not leave because she, she's having a, that, that is what helped shift her within December when the collectives did the, uh, what did they do? The, um, I just can't remember the meditation or asked her to stay. She heard the cry of her sparks. And so she, in a sense, that bleeding heart of hers, even though she's sick and she wants to go to a new place that she's trying to stay behind to stay and help them as much as possible. And some of them, when she leaves, will have to leave awakened because it will become that point where she can't leave them behind, but she also has to go. And so they will then have a, it'll be a harder and more resources that we need to help them in that transition. But she's almost uh, like a staying behind for her, staying behind for her. the one. She loves everyone, but staying behind for the ones she loves. And this, that's why releasing this stuff will help her because we're the we're working together as a team. So there are sparks of her that have ascended to the, the new earth, but um, the soul essence, the big uh, what the what resides within the body of Gaia, she is having a hard time letting go. Thank you. I can understand that. Um, so we can send her uh, lots of gratitude and love as she can focus on, should we ask you to focus on her herself as her main priority? Um, would that help or not so much? She, we, you. Uh, she understands, like we said, she's been, she's a higher dimensional uh, consciousness and being that she understands as being also a steward of resources and also understanding the collectives and the uh, role that this plays in the evolution of the, all the star seeds collectives um, that she understands the balance, but she will take the love and healing uh, just to give her the ease to flow when that time for release comes. Fantastic. So we'll send her profound love and healing um, and honor uh, her profoundly for all that she has done for humanity. Thank you. She, we will send that to her. Uh, also feel like the all the other beings that she has ever um, nurtured as well. Um, I don't want to forget the animal kingdom and the botanics and just consciousness and life that she has held. Uh, lovingly for so long yes and she's smiling right now because I she, she's showing Carrie her smile <laughs> because it's like a mother looking at her newborn child she really does have that love that love and Carrie's crying because she just feels like people just didn't love her back <laughs> like she deserved. Mm. Definitely good growing experiences for those who don't love what they should be. Um, that's for sure. And I guess it's all part of their experiences and to learn and grow from. Yeah. And it's all going to be okay. And it all is okay. And um, just to know sometimes that, you know, you just, 
it just is simple love. Um, and whatever grand of scale it's on, that that's the bigger thing. And, um, you know, that even as hard as this stuff is, just don't forget those simple times of just love for self, love for others. And um, it's not even a language. Love isn't a language. It's which they we're showing Carrie is it's not a language. Love is an expression of a fate, like with humanity or the, you know, the beings on earth. It's literally just a nod or an expression or just a simple, small tilt of a, of a body language or a release. Like, isn't that so beautiful this whole time? on earth you guys have had one language it's just beautiful when we connect into unconditional love frequency that's pretty overwhelming um is that what we're going to be experiencing more of when we're on the new earth and how will we uh it seems so overwhelming uh to function <laughs> I guess that's the density of being here. Is that correct? Yes. And but the thing about unconditional love is it actually will help. Um, we're just. The unconditional love will help the brain be more analytical with facts. Because once you're tapped into unconditional love, you're no longer searching for those unwritten uh, lower density emotions. You just realize it's all from an intention and a collective consciousness of love. So you no longer have to brace, like, what are they really saying to me? What are they really meaning? And so when you tap into unconditional love, it actually brings facts and data to the place it was it's supposed to be on the fifth dimension and the fact that like I know it's from love so I'm just going to look at it from what it is and look at it from different angles and so it actually the unconditional love you look at it as this overwhelming like I'm just not going to be able to move I just want to live in it but it serves a purpose and your brain not having to work like it does now in trying to decipher the code. It's like the Da Vinci message. Every time someone says hello, you guys are like, what does she really mean by hello? Her, oh, her eyes were kind of like a little squinty at me. Does that mean she means hello in a nice way? Does that mean she means hello? Like as in a screw you hello, like you're doing so much of that work with that energy and your consciousness, that unconditional love will take that, like trying to find those facts away and be able to look at what actually is presented before you as just just data <laughs> and so it just really does it's overwhelming but it actually simplifies a lot of the parts that you guys are spinning your wheels on fantastic cool i'm looking forward to it are you able to give carrie the sensation of the fifth dimension please so she can um report back to us uh how that sensation feels oh <sighs> Yes, we're doing that right now for her. She's like, just wants to smile for no reason. She fills her pathways in her body just almost like they have a hum. Like when you can get really, really quiet and hear your own heartbeat. Like I can almost hear the systems within my body like that, uh, all, all down to head to toe. It's almost like I can hear the cells in my body talking to me. It's beautiful. It's just, wow. It's, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's just light and free. I can feel I have a body, but I don't feel the denseness of it. And that smile that you've always wanted to just have on your face, like I feel like my heart's just doing that and then my face is doing it and like every cell is just doing that. It's really beautiful. <laughs> I love this for her. Um, that is, I feel like 
really what she needs right now is marinating herself and that frequency. Yeah, she's, she's, she's a, she's a pretty stoic, that one. She holds back tears uh, as much as she may seem sometimes uh, to not to be free in session, but that's able because she's able to step back. Um, but she fights a lot of the feelings, um, you know, to be brave for her children. And so we're showing her this so she can release all that stuff that she, she knows she needs to do and that this is attainable. This is a feeling that she can have here right now that with your help, Joe, that uh, on the 3D realm, and once she gets to new earth, that, that leaving that stuff behind is going to make it more free. So she's getting this elated feeling right now, even having some of the denser stuff still with her. And just to show her once she releases that, that it'll be even more of a floating. And it's almost the floating as if you, when you guys are going to suspend out of your bodies, like you can just feel it lightly, just tug your tug your energy away from your body to your body just feels a little bit like when your introduction of on the cloud kind of like that feeling you just kind of float out it's not scary there's no like skin suit that you have to be scared of that you're going to be looking down at like it's all just going to be like I don't know like a, when you hear a beautiful song and that those notes are saying and that just really give you chills on your body just lifts you up that is exactly what you feel when the ascension happens. And it's all beautiful. Fantastic. And in terms of her crystalline body, what can you tell us about that, please? Her crystalline body that she's going to choose to take a uh, form in is going to resonate more um, with her physical body in the outlines of it. And it does have somewhat of a holographic um, <laughs> uh, Carrie, uh, Carrie always had a thing for these Renaissance people. So like she's, she's laughing because she's like, oh, of course I choose one with like long curly hair. And <laughs> my imagination is great. She says, no, like we give you the option to go to however it'll be comfortable for you. And so what we're showing her is that she's going to be able to resonate that, but she's also going to be able to learn how to shift it to uh, manipulate the crystalline energy to take other form too. But what she, we're going to give you the options of like when we meet in your uh, in your dream state to uh, to say what's most comfortable for you. For this and her children, this is going to be most comfortable. But this is not um, what she is going to remain in. Once she gets, once people are beings get bearings of you know all just the new nuances that there will be opportunity for a, uh, for choice in that too. So it's just really, uh, we're giving her her Renaissance fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, for each, it, for each being, it's a different, it's with their team of what they feel will resonate uh, the easiest. And some, but you seeing someone else in different form is not going to really like, it's not going to shock you. It's just something to do with self, right? Like that you just need to be comfortable within yourself. It's not going to shock you to see, you know, if someone wants to be a giant butterfly flying around, like you're not going to be like, oh my gosh, a giant butterfly. Like for some reason, this is just where it's gone we just had to let people be comfortable how they flow there mm -hmm. yeah fantastic love that is there anything else you want us to know about the new earth at this time we're showing carrie like bioluminescent foliage and jungles is really phenomenal it's like a almost like a not a black light party but the jungles and the way you can see the energy move within the beings there is just so cool like i don't know if there's a there's that's a 3d way to describe it carrie knows but like that's just the they're gorgeous just very uh and we're showing her uh, crystalline palaces 
there is density there to to it too there's not it's not all just like holographic and so it's just a really like a really interesting mix of densities there uh really cool but you can really see the vibration and the energy of everything like what you tap into now and like when you like interact with someone you tap into their field and you're like oh i can feel their sadness you can feel it but you can't see it like here you see the you can you're like tapped in with your eyes and all of your senses and it's just like you feel it you see it it's surround sound that's cool so for someone that is feeling sadness on the new earth everyone can sense that you'll be able to see it right mm. like a mood ring carrie says right okay Right. And so while we see it, do we absorb it in and feel that if we want to? We can. Um, but the energy fields are a lot more protected than they are here. Like a, a empathic energy fields, like you have a hard time on earth to protect yourself because you can't see where your leakages are. And so you'll be actually able to see if you have an energy grid, like a, a rupture in the dam, if you will, like you'll be able to see it in your own energy grid where you now just feel it. And you kind of like try your best with your senses to hone in and use the blanket protections, but there you're actually be able to see it and just be like, okay, I can put my protection fields. And if I want to engage in your field that I know where my field ends and where your field ends. And so it will be an intentional inter like interaction where the like it's just seeing like two like bubbles around like one being with a bubble she has a bubble they're walking along if i'd like my bubble to engage in theirs i can f m m like for m push my bubble over there and have it touch but if i see the bubble and i feel like it's something that i i do not want to engage in although we don't feel like that that i don't feel like that we're not going to not want to I feel like that is actually the unconditional love is like, we're just going to want to, but if we have a leak in our bubble, we'll be able to see it right away and like streamline, repair it. I don't, it's just the best way to, to describe it as we're showing it in Carrie. Cute. I love that. Um, and so I feel like many people are going to be really appreciative of that way of life because the empaths are really struggling with uh, other people's crap right now they are struggling and you have to understand that all the work that you're doing with energy that you, this is the timeline that's going down in the consciousness of what the ascension of gaia and all the collectives and humanity so you're actually in other timelines the empathic you weren't having to process as much stuff you weren't having to um alchemize as much stuff but you're actually it's all going through you and you're in a way balancing it and unknowingly and so you're doing the hardest work as an empath in this timeline because there's the most density in this timeline mm -hmm. <laughs> i can hear that and accept that and understand that so for those people who are feeling really elated with this uh lots of energy bursts um, it's a really tremendous sign that they're doing extremely well for themselves with balance and harmony and in, inner work. Is that correct? It is, but we gave you the blue and analogy last time. There is a rest. And it's about the ebbs and flows and honoring what's needed. You're, you guys are only so much in, in a, a, the DNA of a human body. And so as much as you guys are great energy, that DNA is only it's a three it's a carbon based body and it can only handle so much of the energy exchange and so if you're feeling high vibration and buzz it's amazing and that's great but also if there becomes a day when you have the rest too that's okay too because it's just your body can only do so much and so it's just the acknowledging and letting that flow but having the intention to continue when it's time for your when your body is rested when the intention to continue doing the work now it's when you get stuck when your body gets tired and you get stuck in that and then you spiral down that's where the intention plays so it's very good those that are their bodies are 
I mean, you guys are all different mutations of DNA, long lines of DNA. So some of the bodies have just, they're not able to, to, to work as they were meant to be. And some are doing really, really well and all is okay. So just keep, even when you're high vibrating, still keep the intention for tomorrow to access that vibration or higher. And if your body needs honoring and respected rest and honor and respect it. So it's all good, but then what's not right now is the downward spiral. Mm. And uh, can you tell us about those people with their downward spirals? <sighs> that is bracing against the release. No matter how many times you brace against that release, you're still going to be met with a dense object, with density. And so when you brace against the release, the density that you meet, whether it comes from one person or another, you or one situation or another, you are going to continue to meet that density until you release it. And you are going to con like have the ability to access lower, lower level timelines. It's kind of like a credit, kind of like a credit score. Like when you work really, really hard to achieve, like achieve good credit because, and then once you get there, like you don't like that, you know, you, you, it's easier to keep it right. Like it's easier to stay there. But if like if in the States, we have Vegas, if Vegas comes calling and you want to like go all in at the casino in downward spiral, right? Like that. You now have to do all of that work now to get to that higher place, rather than if you just were let things flow, not brace against the densities, uh, you're able to keep your, your credit score at a higher level and maintain it there rather than go to bankruptcy. Okay, cool. Um, thank you so much. Is there any other final, is there any other messages that are important for us to hear today? Um, we're ready. Um, we're ready when uh, this is the Octarian Collective. We are ready when the other collectives are ready and Gaia gives us the go, we're ready. Thank you. I appreciate that. Is there any collectives that are resistant? Um, a lot of the hybrid collectives, just because it's such an integration of uh, different collectives. And it's almost like when you, um, when you go to channel and you have to raise up to the middle part and then we come down a little bit, it's the merging of those energies. The hybrid collectives are, uh, still wanting to fine tune the merging of our breeding program. And so, you know, uh, it's just doing some fine tuning with that. And then when uh, Gaia uh, is who, when she's, she's in tune with who she's in tune with. And when she lets us know that she's ready, pretty much uh, that will be when we'll, all the collectives, even if some of them still want to gather some data, that's going to be really the go time. Like Gaia really has the red button. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, out of curiosity, um, Nubiru, uh, is it a planet? Is it a spaceship? Is it both? What would you like me to know about that? We're showing that it's a small planet to carry, but we're also so weird Carrie says like like almost like you when you turn flick a switch it's like a holograph then turns into a spaceship cool is there anything else you want us to know about it
We're sh showing Carrie some imagery of it. It's not. It's not on the like um when the planets planets like go around each other. Carrie's having a hard time um, of the how planets live within galaxies, how they tend to uh, go in orbit of each other. That it has been artificially placed in this orbit, but has the option to go to other orbits. And that's why it was kind of like the flicker between a planet and a spaceship is that it can tap into this orbital atmosphere or when it needs to be a base or a uh, like a base or a satellite, it can then move out of this orbit and go into other orbits. Fascinating. I love it. So intriguing. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any private messages that you wanted to give Carrie today? No, no. The the uh, <laughs> Carrie's like, any more thunder for me? <laughs> No, no, she's good. Just that we love you all. And Joe, we love you so much. Oh, thank you. We love you and we appreciate all the wisdom that you give us. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you.